play in our offensive category is the is the power sweep, as we call it. Actual number of that play is 49, and the reciprocal of that is 28. 49, 28. It's the power sweep. Actually, it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. Hey, welcome into the Packers play playbook uh, video thing here. <laughs> Stumbling out of the gate a little bit here. I'm Dusty Evely, and with me is Packers legend uh, and 97.3 The Game's own John Kuhn. John, you ready to jump into some film, watch some stuff, kind of get in the, foot, the nitty-gritty of football a little bit? Yeah, absolutely, man. Week one, all we have is preseason film, but <laughs> some very necessary reasons to check out preseason film, Dusty. And uh, I think you're going to like some of the uh, some of the plays that we picked. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to dive in. We got three plays that you picked, and so we'll get into those now. Um, I do have some some questions likely along the way in terms of how much some of this stuff means in terms of what we'll carry over to the regular season. But for now, man, let's just look at the play. So what we'll do, we'll run the we'll run the play, and then we'll kind of run it back, kind of point out a few things. So the first one we're going to look at here is from the Bengals game, and this is going to be Emmanuel Wilson's 80 yard touchdown run. There he is in the backfield. Bounce it out at speed. <laughs> I I wish I was ever that fast in my entire life. I'll tell you that right now. And then he yeah. just he just rolls. So I I figure kind of what we'll look at here, and we'll skip ahead a bit. This angle here is what we'll kind of look at. So John, what you you kind of called this play out? What was it about this one that you really kind of wanted to look at? Well, first, Dusty, let, let me tell you why this play is important to look at here as as a fan or a, a lover of football. Before we even break down the play, if you can go back to the wide copy. Yeah, know, yeah. When it, now, now look at this right here. The, the reason why this play I chose is because this is a staple of a Matt LaFleur. This, this is something Jordan Love will run during the regular season a hundred times. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is it's a simple RPO. And people want to know what, what's an RPO, run pass mm -hmm. option. Well, right over here on this side, you can look very easily. There's your pass option. Up top is your run option with the running back. They're going to try and run a little inside zone right there to the passing strength. So the strength on this play is to the tight end that you can see at the top of the screen. Mm -hmm. And why, why does Magoo pick the run over the pass? It looks like there's an awful lot of guys in the box here. But let's take note at the Will linebacker, the man that's, that's lined up right there on the hash marks. You see him right there? He's mm -hmm. lined up man-to-man -man with the route on the passing option. So now let's go to the tight copy from behind the line of scrimmage. All right. Yeah, I know the pack. The way the Packers like to run that is it's typically uh, typically look to numbers, right? And so it's if you've got a numbers advantage, you'll throw that. And that to me almost, I mean, that's a question for you. That is, man, he's lined up inside a little bit there. Uh, sometimes I've seen the Packers throw that. I don't know if that's going to be a point of emphasis this year with the floor or not, but with that inside shade, you'll sometimes see them throw that. Is there? Is, well, is that the way you see that as well with, with that? Yeah. Like he could have gone either way on this necessarily? No. He absolutely could go either way. And if this was Aaron Rodgers running this play, most certainly would be the pass option. This one would yeah. get thrown out. He's got leverage. He's got an outbreaking route. He's got inside leverage with his defender there playing man. But if you look from the beginning of play, that man jumps that route. He, he jumps right oh, all over. Absolutely, yeah. He has him man. Now, you'd love to see cover two for this play. You'd love to see even nickel for this play because the Packers are in 11 personnel. The Cincinnati Bengals being a preseason game, they throw out base personnel, which means they have four down linemen, three linebackers. They have more big guys than the Packers have big guys to block. Yeah. So the Packers got a six-man blocking scheme, but one of their big guys is displaced. They replaced him with a safety, and you like to believe that the safety, if you leave him for the running back, he should be able to win. Now go ahead and run this play. As we said, the will linebacker will run out of there. He'll jet right out of the box yeah, to cover the wide receiver, which that, leaves right the safety there. walk down in the box to cover the tight end man. So he's already gone at that point, and he's not reading. It looks like, I mean, he's got his mind made up before, but he, you can see him already vacating there. He already sure. decided the safety was in the box. 
Magoo was going to go uh, run the ball to the safety and not try and challenge that that quick throw to the outside. They are yeah. still trying to run the clock down here in a preseason game too. But this is six on six. The four down linemen, the Mike and the Sam. And look at these double teams working yeah, up get to the like, level here. These are fit. that kick out there. Oh. Yeah. These, these double teams, and then as you watch Sean Ryan, the right guard, come off of the double team because his man engages, he disengages and gets his man, gets just enough of his man to get him down to the ground. And now on an inside zone, you weave this thing back, you have to make the safety miss as the running back. Not only does he do that, he gets the safety nosy in the hole, and then he uses his speed to break outside. And then it's pay dirt. A simple pay play dirt. with simple numbers – everybody just does their job can result in an 80 yard touchdown just that simple so that is a day one install rpo run pass option mm -hmm. executed by perfection by the threes you'll see it run by the ones an awful lot this year yeah and just a just one more time here as you can see him because we saw it from the tight angle there he's vacating that quick they're almost trying to bait him we saw the defenses do that against the packers last year where they kind of bait that throw he's almost baiting him by playing the inside then he crashes hard on that the one yeah, thing i, I didn't want to pick your brain about here a little bit john um that man here and the safety in terms of like defensive fit it looks like like that's almost reactive to me this almost looks like that spills outside and he's looking to hit inside or should he be outside and he come inside i'm kind of curious about because they both kind of go to the same hole. They're both hitting there. And then when he bounces, there's nothing out there. I'm kind of curious well, your thoughts on that one. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I can tell you by the run fits, let's go back to behind the line of scrimmage and you'll be able sure. to see. It now, now what, when you have this, you can tell each man's gap, the will linebackers outside the, uh, the, the Mike linebacker is in there in the B gap. The Sam linebacker is in the a gap. That safety is that B gap. He is the box. Okay. defender got that B gap. The outside here is won by Austin Allen, the tight end. Oh, he yeah. does a great job of keeping this defender from being able to close the hole down and works him off the ball so that the running back can bounce. If he gets pushed back at all, the running back has to insert in the hole where the safety is, makes it a much easier play for the safety. But because Allen got pushed, got him off the line of scrimmage, the running back could take that thing all the way back to her. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautifully done. Be I, I typically uh, stick to more of the passing game stuff, but man, there's nothing like just a beautiful run play. Uh, do you have anything else on that one, John? Or do you want to move on to the next play here? That one's perfect. Let's go to play number two. All right. Play number two, Jaden Reed touchdown from the Pats game. So just set up touchdown pass some over here. Packers and 11 personnel under center play action. The stack right Jaden Reed running across the field. Beautiful ball by love. John, what do you got on this one? Let's go right to before the snap of the ball. Christian Watson simulating what Alan Lazard used to do all the time for us, and that's block out a dirty defender, pulling a man out of the box. And when he comes down in the box here, he's coming to block the safety. That's the safety. Mm -hmm. And when Christian Gonzalez comes over in man, he knows that the safety is going to come down in the box. And if you go back to the motion, you can even see Christian Gonzalez communicate something with the safety like, Hey man, it, go ahead and rush. I got whoever comes out. You'll get you'll get yeah. a free run quarterback. He's letting the safety know to go ahead and engage. Um, so Christian Watson is going to simulate that. He's going to simulate the block that you would actually get on the run play, which this is a play action for. Uh, doesn't get a whole lot of his man. I'd love to see him get maybe a little thicker on the guy, maybe a little bigger of a bump, but he gets enough of him that he stumbles and AJ Dillon can pick up the trash. Now it's also important that Christian Watson, when he runs that bluff, he doesn't take too long. I said, there's a fine line there, Dusty. Yeah. You want to get more of that man on your bluff, but you don't want to waste a lot of time. You don't want to dilly-dally because as Christian Watson's coming out in the flat, you'll see how it pulls that third defender up and on him. And that leaves a safety in a bind. That safety, that deep safety backer, he's now in a bind. Do I want to cover number two, which is Jaden Reed, or do I want to bump all the way outside and get Romeo Dobbs, who's on the dig? Now go from behind the ball. Already there we go. Now watch number 21 as Jordan Love hits the top of his drop and does his first pat on the ball. Right about there. Now you yeah, can't there he is right there. The, we'll go back to the wide copy there. But when Jordan pats the ball, you see how his, his feet, his hips, his shoulders are all pointing to the oh, left. Yeah. But the stripe of his helmet 
was pointing to the right side of the field, holding that safety, looking at Romeo Dobbs. Now, if you go back to the wide, you can see what it does to the safety. Yeah, it kind of holds him in place there. It's almost like feet in cement, right? Like he's kind of – you see him he, tied up a little bit. See, yeah. right there, yep. instead of instead of driving down on Jaden Reed, who has clear leverage and a win right there, he drives down towards Romeo Dobbs at first, and that is what gives this play the opportunity to win. And then Jordan Love throws an absolute dart over the second level and in front of Jaden Reed to score a touchdown. I mean, other than the pass protection being perfect and the absolute mashing of A.J. Dillon on this play, the setup by Jordan Love – and the execution of all three wide receivers to, to, to really sell this play, putting that steep safety in a bind, makes it nearly impossible to cover. Yeah, and we'll say, too, I mean, I'll give credit to the Patriots defenders, too. These linebackers in the middle, they don't give anything on play action. So he's trying to sell that play action. Like you said, they've got everything looking right. you got them pushing forward. you got Watson as the insert. That's what, like a step and a half up. That's a shuffle step, and you're trying to hit that over there. And – <laughs> love has to work to force that in i mean i know i've seen this you, you, this is kind of a clear out a lot of times you're trying to hit that guy behind him but they cover that up and then love has to work to kind of get that forced open so really nice job by love there to make sure those those linebackers are held in place yeah and you can see the bind that the deep safety was in had he charged mm -hmm. on Jaden reed the jordan love would have been in a dilemma there because that would have been a much more difficult throw to try and get that over that linebacker or around that linebacker somehow to Romeo Dobbs, who still has a defender on his hip. So it just happened to work out that the, the Patriots, they did a lot of things right on this play, but the one mistake that they made, Jordan Love was able to capitalize on. Yeah, and the, the one thing I will say, and this is another thing to pick your brain up out here, John, because Watson has this little chip release flat, which clears the space, gives you your room there. But he almost, it's since it takes a minute to wait for that route to cross, Watson then kind of curls up, which kind of kills the spacing on that a little bit. Like that's a little tighter than you would typically like to see right there. So in that case, I mean, is that, is that an instance of, I know, you know, I don't know this. I don't know how well you know this. Uh, is that an instance of Watson potentially starting that secondary route a little too early and veering up field and kind of getting in the space there? Or is that, does that seem fine to you? Well, I, I can imagine the timing of this play as they ran it in practice was much faster than this, you know, um, they, they probably ran this play, you know, a dozen times in practice. And Christian Watson was either bluffing a lot faster, hitting the flat a lot quicker. The ball was coming out of Jordan hand a, a lot faster at practice. But here, because there is that time to think, there is that time to pat the ball in the pocket, maybe an extra half second is enough for Christian Watson to believe, okay, everybody's covered. Now I need to uncover and create because Jordan's about to start to scramble rolls. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of my thought as well. Uh, is that Good. All right. Anything else on this one, John? You want to move to the last play we got here? No, no, I love it. I love that play. That's a tremendous play. Um, we'll start this one. How about we start this one tight to kind of run through initially? So this is just uh, my notes on this. I've got quite a few notes on this, but my main note on this is just Kenny Clark being a full grown man. Uh, so we got this wide zone tackle for loss one year in the backfield Seahawks in 21 personnel look like they're running kind of wide zone with a lead there. And Kenny Clark just blowing his man off the ball. So, John, what do you see on this one? Yeah, um, go back to the snap of the ball. Seattle Seahawks are notorious. Their bread and butter is the outside zone. That's what they want to run. So, even in a preseason game, Packers are going to have a defense for the outside zone. And, and this is first and 10. I believe this was their first play of their first possession. Kenny yeah. Clark getting some preseason reps. And there's a couple ways to play an outside zone. Um, you can be very stout on the edge, or you can use a spill technique to kind of destroy um, the, the stretch of the play, the flow of the play. Because an outside zone, everybody knows, they want, the, they want the running back to go like he's running at the outside leg of the tackle, and then they want him to make a one cut straight up the field, right down the hash marks or just yeah. outside the hash marks. So that's what they generally want. But in order to get that, they have to have push, and they have to have everybody running laterally to do it. Watch Lucas Van Ness on the snap of the ball. He's using a spill technique. Goes underneath, rips through, leaves the tackle in the dust. And the reason I know this was how they were going to run the outside zone or uh, play against the outside zone is because look at Quay Walker. It, it's like he, he didn't even think for a second of what he was supposed to do mm -hmm. because 
So as soon as he saw outside zone, he knew Lucas Van Ness was going to spill it, and he knew he was then the outside man. What's important about that is two things. Number one, that shuts down the wave of guys running laterally with Lucas Van Ness and kind of makes the running back have to decide immediately, I'm going outside here. So now it's on Quay Walker to be skinny, be as tight as he can off the hip of that tackle and shut down the lead blocker so that the whole of the run game is real small. Now go back to uh, now go back to Kenny Clark. And if you see Kenny Clark here, I, when, when teams are running outside, if you can get penetra penetration because their hips are going to be turned, they don't want them to be, but they're, it's natural. Their feet are going to be wide steps. If you can get a punch on them, you can get penetration. But if you do that, you have to be quick to recover. Look at this. I mean, this is this is before the running back has the ball. Kenny Clark has already drove his man two yards back, <laughs> and he's got his shoulders turned, working to chase this ball down, which is exactly what he does straight down the line of scrimmage. Really impressive play there by Kenny. Really great scheme for a team with the outside zone. Played perfectly by by Quay Walker, Lucas Van Ness, Kenny Clark. You see, uh, you see Ford down there in the box because mm -hmm. the Packers are playing sub personnel versus 21 offense. I mean, this is the exact opposite of what we saw in the Cincinnati game. This is a light uh, grouping being able to take care of a big grouping. And you also have, I guess, just, just another thing, because you've got that out there, Slayton crossing the face, because you originally have that block down there. By the time he comes back, you've already got Van Ness looping around. So it plays with the protection a little bit there, right? You can see him kind of like coming down, which helps open that for Van Ness. You've got Ford looking to force. You got McDuffie and the and the cutback lane there. Just that was the thing to me. I think when I started looking at this a little bit more, is my initial thought was again, Kenny Clark. I mean, that's that's a tremendous punch. But just the the discipline and everyone kind of in their roles, filling their gaps. I thought was really impressive on those. Yeah, and and Dusty, when when you play teams, they they will have tendencies in certain formations, and I'm sure um, the Seattle Seahawks had showed something along the lines of probably 80% when they get into that, that green formation, just a standard tight end with a fullback in the dot and a halfback behind him that they run outside zone weak, um, you know, a, a good chunk of the time. So what you can do, and Matt LaFleur said this defense under Joe Barry is going to be aggressive this year. You can play with an aggressive mentality, have that weak crash with the linebackers playing over the top and uh, more times than right, you can bank on that being the right call for that play. That's right. John, you got anything else for us today? No, just uh, just three kind of basic plays, two by the offense, one by the defense, all three things that we're going to see all throughout the season this year. And all three things, it doesn't matter if it was the starters or the threes in there, executed very well, each man doing his job. And you can see how uh, uh, if you're one of 11, just like in the Seahawks or uh, the Patriots game, if you're that one man and you make a mistake, it can be disaster. And the Packers, all 11 executed on all three of these plays. Great stuff, John. Appreciate you, man. Really looking forward to the uh, to the regular season and talk about plays with all of the ones all of the time, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait.